Hello everybody, welcome to this new playlist where I will talk about microservices, Spring Cloud and Kubernetes. In this introduction video, I will describe the reasons to choose the microservices architecture, their benefits and the common design patterns used. If you're interested, subscribe and follow this playlist. Let's start by the use case by a bookstore, a website of a bookstore, where users can search for books or authors. The web page will display the prices, I can add items to a basket and buy them. I won't talk about the front-end part, just the back-end. Then the emails will be sent to the users to indicate the order ID, the shipping information and the bill. And now I have to handle the user's request, the user's visit to my website. One of the main requirements of having a website nowadays is to have it available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and all the days of the year. But it must be available even if the number of users visiting my website increases. The problem when the amount of visits increases significantly is that I must adapt my resources, my hardware resources to accept gracefully this load. But if the website doesn't accept this load, it will become unavailable. To avoid this, the modern website architectures tend to have multiple instances of the same application. But what happens if I have multiple instances of a big fat application? It will need a lot of time to start up. It will need a lot of hardware resources. And from my experience, I don't think the application will correctly work with multiple instances of itself. Here came the area of microservices. Instead of having one big fat application, I will split it into multiple small applications. To search the book's information, to calculate the prices, to save the orders, to send the emails and etc. But all of those microservices will need an orchestration. When to call each one, handle permissions and build a pretty response for the user. For that, I will need some kind of router, a public entry, a public backend. Will this architecture be better than the previous one? There are some advantages and some disadvantages. Each microservices will be redundant, will be duplicated to ensure the continuity of the service if some error occurs. But having the same application split in several microservices will cause duplications. I have to define the same object in multiple services to allow the correct reception. I have to define the object in the boot servers and in the router to be correctly received. Having small services, I can run multiple instances without consuming a lot of hardware resources. This will help me to be more tolerant over failovers. But I have to build more complex architectures to ensure the stateless of the request, to manage the IP changes and more. And finally, I split the services by features. I separate the responsibilities. This way, I can even have specialized teams to handle each microservice. But to respond to a single request from a user, multiple calls between microservices must be made. That may increase the response time of a request. Now that I have chosen this architecture, I have to choose the technologies. I'm a Java developer with more than 10 years of experience, so I will do it with Java. When talking about web applications in Java, the second thought goes to Spring Boot. A lot of useful tools are available in the Spring Cloud libraries, and each microservice will be running in a Docker container. And to orchestrate all of this, Kubernetes, of course. With all of this, I can have this architecture in any cloud, AWS, GCP, Azure, or even in a traditional server. Kubernetes allows me to run this on any platform. I've already talked about that, but which microservices may I need in a bookstore website? As I said, the public router. I will name it backend user. It's a backend, it's an entry point of all the requests and user because it's the entry point of the user request. I may have another application for admin users or for B2B users, which will be backend admin or backend B2B. This first microservice will be the only one with public access, which means that this one will handle most of the security. Then the internal microservices, the private microservices. To access those microservices, I must go through the backend because they are in a private network and reachable from the outside, for the books information, for the prices, for the orders, emails and more. Every time a new functional need appears, I can add and deploy a new microservice. I don't need to allocate a new server. Kubernetes will distribute the resources to manage a new service. But to manage all of this, I will need to implement some complicated design patterns. 
I will focus in this play unit on the SSO single sign-on, on the secret broker, producer and consumer, service discovery, distributed configuration and more. A lot of work for this playlist. I hope you're ready for it. Subscribe to my channel to miss no video and let's go with the following chapter.